What's going on guys? Today I have another quick Hackintosh tip for you, this time on using the secondary EFI partition to boot your system. Now, before getting started, this is something that's completely optional, and if your current install is working, then there's really no need to even follow this tutorial, although you could gain some knowledge from it. This tutorial is for people that have any combination of three problems. The first problem is legacy booting with AMD Radeon HD 7000 series and RX 200 series graphics cards. Following this tutorial will allow you to boot without needing to use any integrated graphics with these cards. The next problem, which is actually what this video is about, involves ASUS 8 series motherboards aka the Haswell line. ASUS decided it'd be really cool to drop support from booting GUID volumes. I've yet to run into this on any Gigabyte motherboards, but it's definitely a problem on Haswell boards from ASUS. The third use for this video is for those who simply like having a nice clean installation. This method will result in your extra folder and your bootloader being moved to a separate partition, therefore leaving you with a nice clean root directory of your installation. If you're a victim of the first two of those, then you definitely have a reason to follow this video. The third one, it could just be, you know, you really like a nice clean tidy installation. Otherwise, you can do it, but it is absolutely not necessary and will not give you any extra functionality. Now as I said earlier, the problem that I'm having is that I'm on an ASUS Z87 motherboard and no matter what I do after installing a bootloader, it will not boot. I'll go ahead and show you what I mean. So I'm sitting right now on a clean copy of Mac OS X and I'll come up here and I'll run MultiBeast. And for the purpose of this video, there's a few other things that I need, but I'll just do DSDT free, which as I'm sure you all know, will you know install the bootloader, a few other things that you might need. And we're gonna click install, enter that extremely secure password. And at this point, even though the system may not be fully functional with things like audio, the system should at least still boot. Instead, what happens is when selecting the boot drive, the system attempts to boot a few times and then shortly returns to the BIOS, hence a virtual slap in the face. If you have other operating systems on other drives, say for example a Windows 7 or a Windows 8 drive with the Windows bootloader on it, then of course you'll have no problems booting into that drive. After following this video, you'll no longer have these problems booting from GUID volumes on ASUS Z87 motherboards. Now before going on with this tutorial, I recommend that you unplug any hard drives or solid state drives or any other drives other than the drive that you've installed OS X to. This is really going to help us reduce error as time goes on and you'll see why in just a second. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and open up Terminal. I also want to say that all of the following terminal commands will be down below right in the video description for your convenience, but keep in mind that you'll very likely have to modify a couple of things about them to match your system. The first thing we're going to type is sudo space dash s. That's going to get us into super sudo, so once you do that you'll be able to do pretty much anything you want. It also prompts you to enter your password because you use sudo, so whenever you do type your password here, it will not show up, you just have to know that you typed it and hit enter. Also, I want to say if you have a blank password set, you do have to actually set something that has characters in it because a blank password and just hitting enter there will not work. So once you've been authenticated with sudo, the first thing we're going to do is type diskutil list. Now this is going to list us out all the active drives and partitions on those drives in our system. This is why I said you want to unplug any unnecessary drives because all the numbers and letters and things get kind of confusing. Now what we're going to be looking for is a drive that we're currently booted into that has OS X installed on it. In my case, this is disk 0. You'll also notice that I have another drive plugged in, which is my Unibeast flash drive. That's disk 1. Yours might not be in this order. Let's say, for example, you decided not to take my advice and you have three or four different drives plugged in. This drive, even though you're currently booted into it, it's possible that it could not be listed until disk 1 or disk 2 or disk 3. So be sure that this is the drive that you indeed want to fix and get that disk number. Like I said, mine happens to be disk 0. Also, on that drive, you're going to be looking for the partition called EFI. In my case, and I assume 98% of the cases out there, this will be partition 1. As you can see, there's 0, 1, and 2. Disk 1 holds a 200 megabyte EFI partition. OS X will always install this, so you really don't have to be worried about not having it, but depending on how many partitions you have on a given hard drive, maybe you have you know, copy of OS X and a copy of Windows and you know, etc. on the same drive, then it's possible that this could be different. So make sure that you're pointing to the disk you want and the EFI partition on that disk. So in my case, we're going to be looking at disk 0, S1, also right here under identifier. Now once you do that, we're ready to get into the good stuff. We're going to type new fs, one word, underscore hfs, space, dash v, space, capital EFI, space, slash dev, slash disk, 0s1, 0s1 being the drive and the EFI partition on that drive as we just previously discussed. Once you do that, hit enter. 
and it'll say it initialized that partition as a 200 megabyte case insensitive HFS plus volume. That's perfectly fine and dandy. Next, we're gonna type mkdir for make directory space slash volumes with a capital V slash capital EFI and hit enter. Next, we're gonna type mount underscore HFS space slash dev slash disk zero S1 space slash volumes with a capital V slash capital EFI and hit enter. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna be changing the directory that terminal looks at to our flash drive. So right now, if you don't have your Unibees drive plugged in, feel free to do so. You also in theory could use another drive that has a bootloader installed on it, but using your Unibees flash drive or you know whatever flash drive you use that has a bootloader on it is definitely recommended here. So in order to change the directory that terminal points to, we're gonna type CD for change directory. And now we're gonna specify the directory, which is space slash volumes slash the name of your USB. We can come up right here. As you can see, mine is just simply called Unibeast. Yours could be something different, but you know, just feel free to type the name of your drive. And something that I do wanna say, let's say for example, the name of your flash drive has a space in it. That's where things get a little bit difficult. So I'll go ahead and walk you guys through that really quick. Let's say, for example, we have a space between uni and beast. This is how you would type that uni backslash space beast and then the following directory. So it is definitely different. It's something that you definitely need to know. Otherwise, it won't work. Simply typing it like this will not work. You'll get a huge error in that case. So be sure that if you do have a space that you type it correctly. But now getting back to the directory, so we have change directory volumes slash union beast or the name of your flash drive slash USR slash standalone one word slash I386 and hit enter. And now we're going to type F disk, all one word, space dash F space boot zero space dash U space dash Y space slash dev slash r disk one word zero and hit enter next dd space if equals boot 1h space of equals slash dev slash r disk 0 s1 now of course in those previous two commands that disk 0 and disk 0 s1 of course once again corresponds to the particular partition and hard drive that we were pointing to and once you do that go ahead and hit enter now you should get some kind of output like this two records in and out 1024 bytes aka one kilobyte transferred in some given amount of time next type cp space boot space slash volumes capital v slash capital E F I slash and go ahead and hit enter and now what we're going to do is we're going to copy the extra folder from our current partition onto the EFI partition so the best way to do this if you don't already have your drives shown on the desktop you can just click the desktop and hit command comma and that'll bring up this window here and simply check hard disks and that'll make all the mounted drives show up so what we're going to do is we're going to come over to Macintosh SSD or whatever the name of your drive is and as you can see, we have extra right here on the root. So we're going to copy that. Come over here to EFI and simply paste. And of course, you want to enter that extremely secure password of yours. So now we can close out of this window here. And the last thing we need to do is actually set this EFI partition active. Right now, if you look at our little list up here of partitions, the active partition is partition 2 seen right here. Since the volume that's going to actually let us boot on this motherboard is found on the EFI partition, we need to set partition 1 active instead of partition 2. Getting right down to it, next we need to type f disk space dash e space slash dev slash r disk 0. Once again, 0 being the selected drive. Enter. Here we're simply going to type p. And now what we're going to do is we're going to flag partition 1. Of course, 1 is relative to whatever partition we're going to be looking at. So like, like I said, if you have a couple different partitions on here and for some reason EFI is maybe 2 or 3, you're going to want to type 2 or 3 or whatever number here. So this is simply going to be F space and then that number. In my case, a 1. Go ahead and hit enter. So as you can see right there, partition 1 marked active. That's exactly what we want. Go ahead and type W, enter, and then Y enter and then type quit 
And now we're all done, let's go ahead and reboot the system. Now, if you followed this video tutorial up to this point exactly as I have done it, that means three things are true. First, that this is a new installation of OS X. Second, you ran MultiBeast. And third, you want to create that bootable EFI partition. At this point, you're good. You can simply reboot the system and start enjoying OS X. However, the key there is that second step, you ran MultiBeast. An added functionality of doing this that I didn't mention in the beginning of this video is when it comes to new installations. So say for example today you follow this tutorial, now in a month's time, whenever you do a clean installation of OS X and you overwrite your, you know, your existing uh, partition, since that EFI partition will not get wiped out if you simply do an erase of the one partition, then you will not need to use MultiBeast again because the EFI partition that we created, we actually copied over our extra folder as you guys saw to it. So therefore, any changes that you would need in MultiBeast are all kept right there on the EFI drive and therefore you don't need to run it. With the exception of one thing. Whenever we run MultiBeast and we do a DSDT free or a DSDT installation, what it does is it actually copies over fake SMC for us into our system library extensions directory. Now since we're not going to be running MultiBeast, it is convenient that we don't have to run MultiBeast, but at the same time, we now need to manually cop over that fake SMC kernel extension. There is however one exception to that. If in your boot.pos file on either your Unibeast drive or in your EFI partition or wherever you're booting from, if you have the kernel flag use kernel cache set to no, then what you can do is you can manually copy over fake smc.kext, you can put it in extra extensions right there, and therefore you won't have to do this next step. However, the last thing I'm going to show you very briefly in this video is how to copy over that fake SMC to your system library extensions directory manually so you don't have to go messing around with the use kernel cache boot flag. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that really quick. Now at this point, we're almost home free. The last thing we have to do here is like I said, install fake SMC manually. Now whether you want to do this with MultiBeast or if you're the kind of person that wants to just go out on the internet, look for the kernel extension and install it manually, that's entirely up to you however you want to do it. As long as it gets installed, it really doesn't matter. Me personally, I'm going to use MultiBeast. So as you can see right here at the time of the recording, the latest version is 6.2.1. So I'm simply going to run that. Go over here to Drivers, Miscellaneous. Fake SMC. I'm not going to check plugins or the hardware monitor application or anything like that. I do already have the plugins installed, so you may want to select plugins. It entirely depends on your system and where you're at. But me personally, I'm just going to do the fake SMC kernel extension itself for now. Come up here to build, install, sign your soul over to the Tony Mac gods, enter that extremely secure password, and let it do its thing. As you can see here, MultiBeast finished, and now I'm going to close MultiBeast. Now you may get a pop-up here saying that the kernel extension could not be used or you know, something like that. That's fine, just hit OK. That's a very common problem and really it's not a problem at all. Now as I'm sure you guys could have told by now, I am on an entirely different system than I was in the beginning of this video. Uh, so right now I actually don't have access to that EFI partition, but I can still demonstrate the point I was trying to make by using a good old fashioned UniBeast flash drive. Now in order to do this, you're going to have to show all the hidden files and folders on the system. So right down there in the description, there's a link to an application called Show Hidden Files. And well, it's going to show the hidden files. So now I'm going to close out of the application. And for the purpose of this video, we're going to pretend that this Unibeast flash drive here is actually the EFI partition that we created earlier. Now of course you won't have this number of files and folders, but the only thing that's important here is that you do indeed have this extra folder that we actually copied over earlier. Now if you're trying to automate this as much as possible for future installations, this is going to be the thing that you want to do. Right now I'm going to open up a new finder window, and now we're going to go to where fake SMC just installed itself to. So that's going to be your installation drive, in my case Macintosh SSD, system, library, we're going to type E, take us right to extensions, type F and it'll take us right to fake SMC. This is the kernel extension that MultiBeast just installed for us. Now if you want to automate as much as possible that is, future installations, what we're going to have to do is come over here to our EFI partition, open up the extra folder. If you don't have an extensions folder already, feel free to make one. Go ahead and enter there. And we're simply going to copy fake smc.kext right into here. Now in order for this to work, you are going to need to make a modification. Whenever we install MultiBeast, what happens is that back here in our extra folder, this org.chameleon.boot.plist will default to not having any type of used kernel cache. Now another possibility you could have here is that you will have used kernel cache, but the string will be set to yes, and what we want to do is have it set to no. So what you're going to need to do is enter the following code, which also can be found in the video description for your convenience. So as you can see, it's just key, 
use kernel cache, end key, string, no, end string. As long as this is set to no, you can have your fake SMC right here in this extra extensions folder and not need to have it in system library extensions. And so by doing that, whenever it comes time that you want to install OS X again, once you boot from the installation drive and you open up Disk Utility to erase the partition, as long as you only erase Macintosh SSD or whatever your destination drive is called and you don't repartition the entire disk, this EFI partition will actually still exist here. Therefore, everything that's on the EFI partition will still exist, meaning that your extra folder is still there, the org.community.boot list, all that fun stuff is still there, which means that you will not need to run MultiBeast. You won't need to copy over fake SMC anymore. It'll pretty much be like a real Mac at that point. You'll finish the installation and you'll reboot into a working copy of OS X. Whereas the way that we typically have to do it is that we install OS X, restart, have to boot using UniBeast, use MultiBeast, and then restart into a working OS X installation. Now if this seems just too much for you and you really just don't want to do this, then you don't have to follow any of this at all. And you could do what I did at the beginning of this segment is simply boot up using UniBeast, run MultiBeast just installing fake SMC, and then restart into a working copy of OS X. The last segment of this clip was just if you want to automate this process for future clean installations. So I hope that clears some things up for you guys. If anything at all was unclear, please feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. After rebooting the computer, you'll then be able to boot up from that EFI partition without any problems. Whether you're using newer Radeon cards, have an ASUS board that won't boot a GUID volume like I have here, or even if you just want a cleaner installation, I hope you found this video helpful. Be sure to go out that like button, it really helped me out. Check out RoachTechnology.com. I'm at CPUKid on Twitter, and I hope to see you guys back here very soon.